In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to reverse insulin resistance naturally. I have several videos on my channel that discuss insulin resistance, how to know if you are insulin resistant, the best foods you can eat for it, etc. But in today's video, I'm going to give you my absolute top three tips for reversing it. These are actionable steps that cost basically no money that you can start implementing today. Now, this video is actually a continuation of a video I put out a couple weeks ago. That video was about what exactly insulin resistance is, what causes it, and how it is related to metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, PCOS, and more. I highly recommend pausing this video and going and watching that one first, because if you watch that one first, then you're really going to understand why the tips I am explaining in this video will work. So in today's video, we're going to discuss the most effective strategies that you can start implementing now to help you reverse insulin resistance. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe and make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. Okay, so in today's video, I'm not gonna go too into what insulin resistance is and what causes it because as I said, I uploaded a video that was entirely on that topic a couple of weeks ago. But the short summary is insulin resistance is when your body is not able to manage blood sugar efficiently, leading to high insulin levels. And these high insulin levels cause symptoms such as visceral or abdominal fat, skin tags, dark skin patches, and irregular periods for women. And this high circulating insulin will eventually lead to other diseases as well. So if you're watching this video today, it's probably because number one, your doctor has diagnosed you with insulin resistance, which is actually pretty rare because doctors do not routinely test fasting insulin, despite it being extremely common. Or number two, you might think that you're insulin resistant based on the fact that you have a lot of the symptoms associated with it. Either way, the steps I'm about to outline can not only help you to reverse insulin resistance, but they can also help you to prevent it going forward and keep you in top metabolic health. And make sure to stick around until the end of the video because a lot of people don't realize just how effective tip number three is. Number one, track your blood sugar. Unless you're a diabetic, it is unlikely that you have ever given any thought to your blood sugar. But measuring your blood sugar levels periodically and noticing how certain foods affect your blood sugar can help you to make adjustments that will improve your insulin sensitivity. As we spoke about in part one of this series, Insulin resistance is caused by high circulating insulin levels, also known as hyperinsulinemia. And what causes insulin to increase? When our blood sugar is constantly spiking throughout the day based on the foods we eat. If we can keep our blood sugar from spiking, or at least spiking less often, less insulin will be needed. And by keeping circulating insulin low, our cells start to become more sensitive to it again, aka insulin resistance begins to reverse. Now I'm going to give you a few tips in a moment for how you can avoid these big spikes and keep your blood sugar more stable. But first, I'm just gonna quickly explain how to test blood sugar. The most inexpensive way to measure and track blood sugar is using a blood glucose meter, like the one from Keto Mojo. You prick your finger, put the drop of blood on the strip, and your blood sugar reading will come up almost instantly. What we wanna be looking for here is how the foods we are eating are impacting our blood sugar. So we want to test before we eat and then periodically after we eat. Mainstream recommendations will say to measure only two hours after you eat, but by doing this, you are missing an important window of time. If you really want a clear picture, I say measure 10 minutes after eating, 30 minutes after eating, one hour after eating, and then two hours after eating. And see how much your blood sugar levels change and also how long it takes your blood sugar to come back down to baseline, to what it was before you ate. It is big swings up and down that we want to avoid. Glycemic variability is the word used to describe the change in blood sugar we see throughout the day. High glycemic variability is what we want to avoid and is associated with an increased risk of insulin resistance. Low glycemic variability is what we want to aim for. 
By measuring our blood sugar, we can see how the foods we are eating are affecting us and if they are contributing to insulin resistance or countering it. All right, but how can we keep blood sugar stable? Let's get into that with tip number two. Be smart with carbs. As we spoke about in the part one video, when we eat carbohydrates, they're broken down by our bodies into glucose or sugar, and this causes our blood glucose or sugar to rise. And this is not the same as protein and fat, which are broken down into amino acids and fatty acids. So if we reduce our carbohydrate consumption to less than 100 grams per day, or ideally less than 50 grams, our glycemic variability will reduce significantly. The second part to this is that when we do eat foods that are rich in carbohydrates, such as bread, pasta, and potatoes, we don't want to eat them naked. What do I mean by this? When we eat carb-rich foods in isolation, let's say a banana or a pear, for example, which have very little protein or fat, the blood sugar spike is significant. But if we take that same food and pair it with protein and or fat, let's say some peanut butter, the blood sugar response is much lower. So if you're having a difficult time reducing carbohydrates entirely, at least pairing them with protein and fat can help to mitigate the blood sugar response. Another thing we can do is that if we are going to eat foods rich in carbohydrates, we can eat them around exercise. And I don't mean you need to go on an intense run every time you eat. Even just going for a quick walk after eating these foods can significantly lessen the spike. The reason being is that your body is using that energy immediately instead of relying on insulin to carry it to your cells. And my final tip for being smart with your carbs kind of goes along with the one to not eat them naked, and that is to eat them at the end of your meal. For example, let's say you are having a steak, a salad, and some roast potatoes for dinner. Eat the protein and the non-starchy vegetables first, and then eat the starchy vegetables. One 2017 study done on type 2 diabetics had participants eat the same meal three days in a row. On the first day, they ate the carbohydrate portion of the meal first, and then 10 minutes later, ate the protein and the vegetable portion. On the second day, they ate the protein and the vegetables first, waited 10 minutes, and then ate the carbs. And the final day, they ate everything together. Insulin levels were tested before eating and after eating every 30 minutes for the following three hours. Insulin levels were significantly lower after the meal when the carbohydrate portion was eaten last. And number three, do the right type of exercise. So many people I work with who are insulin resistant tell me they feel like they're doing everything right and they're not seeing results. They're watching what they eat, they're exercising daily, so what gives? Part of the reason ties in with what we've already been talking about, about how people don't understand the impact that their food is having on their bodies. We think we know what a healthy diet is based on what we see and hear from the media, but <laughs> this interpretation is skewed. The second part to this is that people are not doing the right type of exercise. In the context of insulin resistance, we do not want to be doing endless amounts of cardio or intense workout classes. The goal of exercise should not be on burning calories. Burning more calories does not equal better. For reversing insulin resistance, we want to be increasing our muscle mass, and this is done through resistance training. The more muscle mass you have, the more room to store glucose your body has. This is because our muscles are where most glucose is stored, which can help to reverse insulin resistance because glucose can be spread out more. Now, I've talked about the following study in several of my videos, but I really wanted to mention it again because I think it really hits home that you don't need to be doing a lot of exercise in order to see improvements to your insulin sensitivity. This study was done in 2019 and looked at the effect short duration resistance training had on insulin sensitivity in overweight men. The men did three resistance training sessions a week for six weeks, with each session only lasting 15 to 20 minutes. So a maximum of an hour of exercise each week. During the workout, they did one singular repetition of nine different exercises at 80% of their one rep max. After the six weeks, participants saw an increase in their insulin sensitivity. And I really wanna make this clear. Any type of resistance training you can do, whether that's squats, push-ups, even push-ups on your knees or push-ups on a wall, even just using your own body weight can help to improve your insulin sensitivity. 
Small changes add up over time. And if you do all of these little things right, it will pay off and you will see results. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, remember to give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and feel free to share it with a friend or family member who you think would also find it helpful. And let me know in the comment section down below if you currently track your blood sugar after you eat and if there's anything you've noticed. If you don't currently track and you're interested in buying a blood glucose monitor, I will link to some of my favorites in the description box down below. And thank you so much guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on signs that insulin resistance is reversing. You can check it out right here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you wanna check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.